which again, for people that are celibate, my thing is that needs to be an upfront, not not very first date, mm -hmm. but upfront conversation before y'all drop all y'all holes and y'all decide like we seriously <laughs> dangerous one another one another. That's something to make clear because you know people are operating off of the norm. They they probably plan on fucking whenever you know relationship happens. So I would say don't don't wait. If you're a celibate woman or a celibate man, because I know a couple of men as well that are celibate. Have that conversation, I say past date two or three, when you know they were kind of pursuing, have that up front, man. The same way you would, like, hey, I got kids or anything else that you're dealing with that's going to that's gonna change how they date you. Yeah. And I think and another just thing to, to watch out for, ladies, and, I, and I, I can't speak for anybody else. I can speak for myself. There's a lot of times where, you know, it, my followers know I got a thought past. So, Derek, I don't know. But I'm talking to them. <laughs> like, you know, in my previous <laughs> thoughthood, my previous thoughthood, I'll tell you, it had been a lot of times where I could not have sex with that particular individual that I, I was liking. Um, but that don't mean I stopped having sex other, way, other places. So that's something to be mm. careful about because a lot of times a man or a woman could potentially – do the abstinent thing with you, the celibate thing, the 90 day thing, but are they stopping their course of his, their, their actions other places? Um, and I, I can tell you for myself, um, that's something that I didn't do when I, whenever I met somebody that, that did practice abstinence. So it is something yeah. to watch out for. That's why it's important to find somebody that's also practicing the same thing you're practicing. Yep. So good Great. question. Let, let's see if we got another one on here. Um, don't look, don't laugh at my reading face, cause you know it's. Good. <laughs> hey, are you using your finger? Yeah, you I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I got one for you, Derek. Why are men right, intimidated by a woman's confidence or personality? Usually, those dudes are the guys that need a void in order to feel sufficient in a relationship. He like he feeds off brokenness. You know, this is why I think it's important before a woman even gets on the dating scene. To, to become her best self, become her healthiest self, and then evaluate the guys that she's dating from that place. Because whenever you are in a healthy place, those dudes who feed off brokenness, they can't handle you. You know, whenever you are educated and you're constantly pursuing that, those dudes who are not, they're stagnant, they're going to feel like you're doing too much, you think you're better than them. When you're financially responsible, those guys who, who are not, they're going to feel like you're approved, so on and so forth. So when you're coming from your best self, it's really going to be like a weeding out process naturally for the guys who don't serve you. Yeah. Now I would always just say like, don't look at this as, um, as a flaw that you have your strength, your independent nation. That's not a flaw. It's, it's, it's a blessing. It's, I always call it your bullshit repellent. A lot of times I think people get disheartened because they can't find somebody to embrace their strong nature when you should be happy that you're repelling people that can't handle or carry the weight of your strength, your beauty, and your independence. A lot of times, they, just, they think that is an indictment on their manhood. If you doing good, you got that bag, it's hard. You know, men are men, men tend to be more competitive, not realizing that in a relationship, we don't have to be. You know what I'm saying? This is a team effort. And so a lot of times, because you are more of a woman, some men think it makes them less of a man. And so just avoid those people. I wish I could tell you why they were intimidated. And I bet, I bet there's a host of reasons. But I would say the most important thing is don't spend your time trying to lower your level in life just to make somebody mm -hmm. come. If you can open mm -hmm. that, that jar, that pickle jar by yourself, don't act like you're too weak. Huh, babe, open this pickle jar just, just to stroke somebody's ego. Now, what I said before, because this question comes up a lot, we all, though, have to have some sense of humility. Men and women alike. So, you know, I may be a strong man. I may have the bag myself, but we have to make sure that we're not constantly throwing it in people's faces because sometimes it ain't that you're too strong. It's just you're too boastful. You know what I mean? So that's on both sides of the measure. So I think it's about presenting your best self, letting people know in a matter of fact way that you are this type of person. You are a strong person. You do have yourself and you're self-secure. You don't necessarily need somebody, but you want somebody. Um, let them know that in a matter of fact way, but it doesn't have to be demeaning. And that's on both sides for men and women. Well, see, in that case, it wouldn't be the confidence that's intimidating that man. It mm -hmm. would be that woman's rude ass personality that's turning him off. 
So, you know, it ain't even got to be about confidence and what she got and how she don't need or whatever. She has an off-putting personality. That's a completely different situation. Yeah. But if we're strictly talking about a woman who's just confident, if that turns a man off, nine times out of ten, his idea of a woman is that she's supposed to be lesser than him. And, you know, you said you grew up religious, and I'm not here to step on religious people's mm -hmm. toes, but I do believe that women were designed to be more than just a helpmate. Yeah. And that idea that a woman cannot be confident or that confidence is, is masculine, that comes from that idea that she's only supposed to be a compliment to the man, not a being in her own self, her own dreams, her own personality, goals, uh, problems, emotional needs, but simply as a sidekick to the man. So these days, women are a lot of times forsaken that and they're stepping into their own greatness. When a guy comes across a woman like that, that's whenever it scares him because this isn't just that little, small, in the box type of woman I was told could just come over and be on my hip and she'd do whatever I asked her to do. These women have their own ambitions, their own opinions, they're assertive, they take initiative, they're leaders in their own right. So usually it comes from a guy with a primitive understanding and viewpoint of a woman whenever that confidence really turns in the other way. You know what's, what's, what's unique about what you said about the religious sense? I think a lot of times when you, if people really go back to the Bible in Genesis, Adam never asked God for Eve. He never was like, God, where my her at? Like, it was God that saw that Adam was lonely. Adam looked around and he saw everybody had heirs and he didn't have one. So God gave the gift of woman to man, but not for to be a servant, not to be somebody that, you know, vacuum the, the paradise grass, but somebody to be mm -hmm. a man. And that's what I think we all miss sometimes is somebody that can be compatible, somebody we can talk to, somebody after a hard day of work, you can come and unload. You can be your natural self. You don't have to be all tough around this person. You don't have to have those masks that we often wear when we go to work or go to school. We can take it off and be ourselves. And I think that's what we miss um, when we when we when, at the very root of relationships. That's all we really want. You know, Maslark, uh, Maslow's hierarchy and needs. We all look to feel that 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 relationship, that intimacy. And so yeah. I think sometimes we overlook that. Um, and we skip that in the dating process. Sometimes we look at somebody's uh, how good they look or how much money they make, and we forget that we got to look at their ass every day for the rest of our lives. Like You got to talk to this person every day. And sometimes we miss out on that point. So just a roundabout way, you know, ladies, I, 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 and I think this is something I'm going to say for New York because I definitely want to talk about gender roles. But I think it's, yeah. I think it's important for you to realize and us to realize that you know, when we are a team, we're a team. What's yours is mine, and what's mine is yours. And sometimes we neglect seeing it that way. And so I think when men get in a competitive nature with their wives, they feel like less when they're seceding. But I want to cheer you no, on. I and want I to cheer cut you off. Mm -hmm. But when there's no competition, whenever the woman is willing to just be less, like yeah. you've never seen a dude compete with his woman. If you had that woman that was just meek and, you know, whatever he wants me to do, and I can't think for myself, and I don't want to pursue my dreams because he's pursuing his, and why should I have dreams? I've never seen a man compete with that woman. It's always the woman that's trying to achieve her absolute highest version of herself. And that dude, he always has a primitive mindset around women, around gender roles. It's usually some old traditional bullshit that doesn't fit mm -hmm. in today's society. Like I said, I don't want to step on nobody's toes religious now, so stick to what you what you believe. I'm just telling you my school of thought. Well, see, you know, this is the thing. We had this discussion while the, my, the last day I was at work. Um, and we was talking about it. Like, I want to date up. Like, guys, we are so used to, like, dating down. And I don't mean like dating down, but you get what I'm saying. Like when it talks about financial status, you think that you got to find somebody. And, and I think it all boils down to control though. And I think you had said something about it in one of your videos. I think if you are the financial breadwinner, you feel like you have a sense of control, especially if you're one of those people that use it in a negative way. So you feel like, okay, I make the money. I got this bag. The house is in my name. The car is in my name. The conversation you have with a woman, your woman may be a little differently if your heart ain't in the right place. You know what I'm saying? What you say might go. But if you got a woman that got the bag too, now it's like, now now it's conversations you got to have. It ain't just, we going here. It's like, oh, let's sit and discuss this. And a lot of men, yeah. if, you're, if you're not, and I call it strong men, because I think a lot of times people misinterpret what strength is. I think strength is the ability to come to a consistent 
decision inside of a relationship where two partners are on the same page, when you are patient, kind, and when you realize that you are in a servant position, like Derek, if you got a family, you serve your family, not the other way around. You know what I'm saying? Real leaders do it that way. And I think men sometimes are intimidated because when, they, when they're when they not in the, the financial, like uh, the heavy financial leadership position in the family, and they don't have communication skills, they don't have patience, things suffer because now you can't just use your money to get your way. And um, that's why I think a lot of men are intimidated because they lack other skills that are needed to maintain relationships. Well, well you know, I kind of touched on it, but in the same way we have primitive beliefs when it comes to women and our idea of women or the acceptable woman, a lot of men have very unhealthy viewpoints of who we are as men. So mm -hmm. the same way that women are measured sexually, you know, how many bodies you got, how many times, how many babies you got out of wedlock and shit like that, where we aren't, we a lot of times measure ourselves disproportionately when it comes to economics, how much money we got. And that's why you have these dudes that get into a relationship and they feel like all they got to bring to the table is the bread. No yeah. emotional support, no understanding, no listening, no real friendship, no being her number one cheerleader, her biggest fan, none of that. We just feel like as long as we got money, we've done our part. We sit back and relax and we just receive our gift of a woman. So it goes both ways when you're talking about those unhealthy viewpoints, those primitive mindsets around men and women. We also look at ourselves that way, and that's why whenever a guy doesn't have as much money as his woman, he feels like she's trying to step all over him, emasculate him. How dare you help me and pay the bills and da-da-da-da. You think I'm less than a man? And he's like, his <laughs> ego is so fragile, she's walking on eggshells just to voice her viewpoint in the household. Dang, that's crazy. Man, I, and you know what, though, growing up, I mean, I don't know about you, but growing up, I saw so many examples like that. You know, the male figures that I had to watch were male figures of the traditional sense where, you know, when it when it was time to be emotional, it wasn't. It was anger. You know what I'm saying? Where, where yeah. you know, your feelings are hurt as a man. Instead of saying my feelings are hurt, which you did hurt my feelings. It's, you know, and, and so I just think that that toxic masculinity is, is, is part of the reason why it's hard for men and women, well, unhealthy men and women to come together and have fruitful relationships because, you know, we're, we're so, we're so in the 60s mind frame with relationships, but we're living in a 2018, 2019 type of world. It used to be easier to have a relationship when the man could just tell the woman what he wants to do. You know what she wants to do. She don't have no choice. She didn't have a job. But now it just yeah. when, when when our eyes are being open. And I love the video you did about R. Kelly too. But when our eyes are being yeah, open to so what men are doing with power, you know what I'm saying, and the systematic things that were put in place in order to keep men with power and to keep women from achieving it. The boys groups at work, you know what I'm saying, promotions, the wage gender wage gaps, all these different things is a sense of maintaining control because at some point. There is a competitive sphere between men and women, and I think that that's something we have to we have to relinquish when we create a team. So, I think this was a good topic. You know what I mean? Let's see what's else going on in these these questions real quick. No laugh, I'm a reading face again. Let's see, do's and don'ts during the talking stage, just getting to know one another. I would say. Do pay attention to red flags. If they're already showing red flags in the very beginning, um, it's not going to get better. Not to say everything's downhill from the dating stage or the talking stage, but it's kind of like a job interview. You know, if somebody comes to a job interview late, um, improperly dressed, or, you know, bad hygiene, they ain't, ain't did no homework on the company, like you can count on whenever they get comfortable in that job, things being tenfold worse. So yeah. the first thing is, do pay attention to red flags. And I would say, don't give too much too soon. That's in terms of, of information. That's in terms of investment. Man, I've seen women go on road trips in the first week with a dude for four or five days. I've seen women put money on the line for his mixtape dreams and his studio time. I've seen women give up all the information about the things that they've been through in the past, what the last dude did to them, how he walked all over. They just basically handed over a blueprint for the next dude to do. Like, he knows she's still not healed from this because she's talking about it on the first date. Therefore, I'm going to capitalize on this. I'm going to leverage this. You know, I'm feeding off of this. So mm -hmm. those are the big two that come to mind. You know, do pay attention to red flags and do not give up too much too soon. But and another thing is, is the thing when you say about red flags, though, I think 
it's harder to pay attention to them when you colorblind. Some people are dating colorblind. You've been hurt mm -hmm. before. You got some deficiencies and some voids within yourself that you are looking to feel. So you're not even looking for red flags. You wouldn't know what one was if it hit you in the face. Because unlike school, jobs, and everything else in our lives that require training, we think finding a mate doesn't. You know what I'm saying? We think that we don't have to sharpen our discernment skills when it comes to actually being able to pick somebody that's right for us. So we don't give it time. We think, well, just as long as I like and love this person, that's going to be enough. No, you need to figure out if this person has the skills needed or you need to watch and know what the red flags are. And that takes pre-home. You got to do your homework. A lot of times in your single space, you are waiting around. I see this all the time. When I made a, I made a video one, one of these weeks and it was talking about he who finds a wife finds a good thing, he posed to find me. And I understand that. But a lot of times people interpret that as you're supposed to be waiting somewhere for him. No, in that process, waiting is a passive act. In that process, I need you to be studying, preparing. So even if somebody knock on your door, you realize, ah, oh, this is not the package that was for me. I don't know who sent this package. This ain't got my name on it. God didn't send this package. I'm going to send this back. When you're not doing your homework, you accept things simply because they come into your lives. So the red flags are important to watch for, but you need to know what's red flags. You know what I mean? That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's an important thing. And I think most people are not doing the meditation to learn themselves to even know who's compatible for them. You're looking to get to know somebody else, but do you know who you are? Like, are you studying you? How are you going to find the right person for you when you don't even know who you are? It's a lot of people walking around that think they know who they are, but they don't. So that's why I think that yeah. meditation... That studying, getting a book, um, reading on all these different qualities, case studies, talking to older people, your, your, your people that have had successful relationships. If you're in a congregation, the spiritual advisors, all those different things um, can help you spot things that maybe you wouldn't have spot by yourself. And have a reliable girlfriend. Reliable girlfriend. <laughs> Not Define that. Define right. that. Like, like, people think that just because you go out and club with somebody, that's your friend. No, like, reliable. That, like, got, you know, real sense and your best interest in mind. Not just a yes girl, yes man or whatever the case may be. And those are the people that help you avoid those things. And then another thing, like you said, and I just wanted to elaborate on it, overinvestment. Listen, I don't care what you say. You know what I mean? And, and I, I don't know if we disagree on this, but you know, the boyfriend, girlfriend title to me doesn't come with a lot of security. You know what I mean? And a lot of times we make wife long term investments with people that hasn't earned it yet with us. So I would always urge that if you're just in a talking phase, ration how much you're talking to this person. You know, you may want to talk to him every day. You may want to sit on the phone for hours, but maybe you should just ration so that you don't get your heart too involved too early before you got all the relevant information. You know, because by the time, just like in the R. Kelly thing, he was able to put up a facade until he got him. And then when he got him, he was able to unleash all sorts of demons on him. And that's what a lot of people would do to you. I got it. I want to pause you right there. R. Kelly was dealing with children. So this ain't just yeah. a woman that, you yeah. know, has to do a preparation and has to read the books and talk to pastor. He was dealing with kids. So yeah. I just want to say that because I have a strong, like, fuck you, uh, position when it comes to R. Kelly. So I don't want to give him shit when it comes to men and, and that being the generality and how we measure women. Um, he was dealing with kids, 12 year olds. So just go ahead. But I, I just had to say that. Hold on. But he was habitually like, I, let, let me say this because uh, I watched, like, I've no, I mean, I'm 30. So around the time, the height of R. Kelly, you know, I remember in early 2000s, Chocolate Factory, all that. And I remember the rumblings, but it's it's something about actually hearing the stories. Like when you actually hear and you see people talking about it, man, and, and like you addressed the web of lies that had to be in place to allow somebody to be able to practice that for so long. The supporters, the enablers, that that's crazy to me. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you spoke to something. You said prepare, do the meditations, understand yourself. I think two things we would all benefit from. One, women have to get back to trusting their intuition. Yeah. We, we like, okay, so there's two things. Men, we have to do a lot of learning and unlearning. 
of a lot of the BS we were taught about what makes us a man and our role when it comes to a woman. But women, they have gotten defined so much by the validation of the presence of a man. They've gotten away from that God-given gift in preparation to be able to evaluate a man. Like, there's so many women that get so caught up in the, like you said, the facade of a man, nice smile, he got the money or whatever. He could present to her this marriage or this wife label that's gonna give her the validation that society told her that she needed. And she forgot the entire time her intuition was telling her, no, that ain't it. That ain't your blessing. That ain't the one. So I think women have to get back to trusting that intuition and men, we need to be raised better, man. And I'm not talk, talking about, I want to put it all just on our parents. That's a part of it. Parents, grandparents, society, media, all of it, man. We got so, like, it's so many badly raised boys that grow up broken because of that. And they go out and break somebody else's daughter. Yeah. And, like, if we can't fix those two things before we get into a relationship, we're going to continue to have dysfunctional, unhealthy relationships. And that represented the majority. I agree. Let's see what another question is. Let's see. Mm -hmm. How can a single mother raise a king? Single mother trying to raise a king? I'm going to tell you something. I was raised by a single mom. Ace, I don't know what your story is. Uh -huh. But first, first off, let me say this. Because um, I was thinking about this. That I don't know. I, hey, look, I'm starting to think that God be showing us signs and stuff, because I don't know why I picked up on her question out of all of them. But I was thinking today about my dad, um, and I don't hate my dad. If you, if you heard me tell his truth, you would think I did, because he's not a very great person. But don't think, and society sends this message to single moms, don't think just because you're raising a child by yourself, automatically it's a negative. Sometimes the father in his current state, whenever you have your child, being involved in a situation would be a negative. So first things first, understand you're 100% capable of raising a king by yourself, but I would encourage you to enlist resources. So the same way that a teacher teaches a class and they use the chalkboard, the market board, books, they might have tutors, they have all these different things, enlist the help of the men in your community, enlist the help, put him in programs. My football coaches, that's, I, I honestly believe I got a lot of my masculinity and uh, ability to manage my emotions, not, not have them, but manage them mm -hmm. from sports, from the men that were in my church, even though I'm not too big of a church goer now, man, that was instrumental in raising me. My mom, she supplemented that male presence with the resources that she had in her community. So I would encourage you to do that. First things first, raise a respectful, productive adult first. And when it comes to sharpening him specifically as a man, that's when you enlist those resources, uncles, uh, mentors, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, the thing is, I really hate the phrase, it takes a man to raise a man. Because women have been raising men and women from the beginning of time, whether or not the father was there or not. Like the common thread. Even if you had a, like, even if you grew up in a household where you had a male role model, or a parental figure that was a male, nine times out of 10, there was a strong woman raising you as well. So we're not gonna act like women aren't the common thread oftentimes in raising children. I was raised by my, um, by my mom exclusively. Um, she raised two, two boys and what I mean, I'm glad, like my pops, I love my pops to death. You know, I, I just, I, I love my pops to death, but you know, I was I was so happy, and I was just thinking about it the other day. I was so happy that I had 18 years of my mom instead of instilling values in me about patience, um, being able to talk about things. Because my dad is the complete opposite. Now he's a great person, you know what I mean? But he just he just not he not that guy, you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. now later in life, I'm able to kind of find balance to talking to my pops, but. I never felt like I, I went without. Yeah, it would have been nice to have, you know, a father there every day. But like you said, I had people in the congregation. I played football, sports. I had all those other male figures around. So I agree and concur with everything you just said. Um, mm -hmm. Like, my, man, look, again, just to piggyback on what you said, I'm just going to tell it. My dad <laughs> has a daughter the same age as mine. This dude is almost 60 years old. That's not the bad part. Um, uh, aside from the fact he didn't raise his first six kids, he's still having kids. Mm -hmm. He had that, that my, his daughter with a girl too young for me. Whenever she got pregnant, she was 17. Like, my dad is, is technically a pedophile. 
Not technically. He's he's a fucking pedophile. On top of being a deadbeat, on top of being a drug dealer, all these different things. And again, I don't hate him. In fact, when I met him, I met him at the 20, 20, I went 20 years without ever seeing him. I went from four years old to 24 years old. When I met him, man, it was such a relief. I was so grateful because my entire life, I thought I was missing something and I was mm. destruction. Like I can only imagine how it would have turned out if I got raised by my dad and I saw him as my hero and he out there still running the streets. He out there, he ain't trying to really have no legitimate business about himself. He choosing on little ass girls. Like where I would be right now, as opposed to my mom, although I'm sure it was very difficult, being able to say, these are the things you will not do. I will not have. I don't raise you to be that way. So I, don't, I, I'm, I'm, I always like to try to address that shit because I get it. Fathers are necessary in terms of how much value they can provide if they're in a healthy place, if they're good fathers. And the same thing goes for moms. You know, if you have an unhealthy, toxic, broken mother, she could do a whole hell of a lot of a damage on the child too. But I just want the single moms out there to know by default, most times if the dad isn't in the life, it's a reason why. And it comes from a place of character. You know, unless he died, went to war or some shit like that. But if you're talking about he's just not in the life, nine times out of 10, you're doing better. You're doing better than you would be doing if he was in that child's life in terms of what he would pour into your baby. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, now I got one that I'm, 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 I bet you glad you're not hearing this question no more, but What's that? Why are y'all single? Y'all come off as perfect men to me. Y'all shouldn't be single. I'll take one of y'all out. Well, that's a good, I won't say a good question, mm -hmm. but it's a needed conversation mm -hmm. because it comes from a place that something's wrong with being single. There's yeah. something deficient with you. There's something you don't know. There's something you're not worthy of. There's something you're not ready for yet in which we have to ha stop having this one-dimensional viewpoint of being single because it causes so many people to stay in relationships that don't serve them, toxic relationships, because yep. if they're single, that means something's wrong with them. So they need the validation of a relationship. So even whenever she's asking that, I don't really dignify that too much. When I was single, I'm get engaged, and now that I'm mad, I don't really give that too much thought. But we do need to get rid of, rid of this viewpoint of single. Some, you're single, something's wrong with you. You're mm -hmm. not good enough to be chosen. Sometimes single mean you know you're too damn good for what you're presented with. Matter of fact, with the fact that the majority of what you're going to be presented with not being all that good these days, all these broken, dysfunctional um, setbacks, ain't got no money, no ambition, no yep. patience, hella baggage. With that representing the majority, I actually would ask some of these people in relationships, why the fuck are you still in that? Mm -hmm. Not not questioning the single people. That's hey, you know what? I always say it like this, man. It's about knowing your value. You know what I mean? Things that cost more, stay on the shelf a little longer because there ain't no discount sales on this. Can't buy me with EBT cards. I know my worth. And sometimes we got to remember that. And like you said, that peer pressure, those questions when you go to your family reunion and, and Thanksgiving, when you going to bring me some grandbabies? When you start letting that let, like, affect you, it erodes sometimes your self-worth. Your self-worth is the price tag you put on yourself. This is the amount of effort, attention. This is the skill set I need. These are the expectations and standards I have. And that's non-negotiable. And guess what? I'm telling you, when you have high-ass standards, you might wait a little bit. But it's worth it. You know what I mean? I'm 29. I'm about to be 30. Why I'm single? It's because I'm 29, about to be 30. I got the hey, rest of my life. Uh, a couple days before you. I think I'm older than you. I'm July 1st. Oh, yeah, 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 July 20th. I was like, damn. Yeah, okay, I, I, I ain't even that up. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> but, like, but it's the thing, like, I, I'm, I'm about to be there. And so my thing is, my last relationship was horrible. And it wasn't horrible. No, first of all, compared to a lot of, I be reading y'all stuff. I don't even want to put my, but my relationship and my standards were, were, was horrible. I didn't know what I was doing. And I couldn't give to her because I didn't, I didn't have me to give. Mm -hmm. um, I got in a relationship when I was 18. And we were 18, 19, 20. We broke up before I was 21. That's my last relationship. And things didn't go the way I wanted to go, but that heartbreak still felt real. Even though the relationship and the love may have been fake, those emotions of heartbreak hurt like hell. And what I said was, I got to take time to remake my character. And that takes a lot of times more than just six months to do. Sometimes it takes years to remake who you are 
and become the person you hope to become. And people rush into relationships one after another, not realizing that you're creating relationships from the same broken mold. Mm. What I wanted to do is remake that mold. And so I can speak for myself. Um, I wanted to be better prepared the next time I get into one. And the next time I get into a relationship, I don't want a girlfriend. I want a fiance. I want a wife. And so I'm in preparation for that. And so in order to do that, what I got to do is save my money, my figurative money. I got to save it. You feel me? I can't be spending it. Every time you get in those relationships that don't work out, you spending your money on it. You know what I'm saying? And then when it don't work out, you got to go recoup that money and get some more. What I'm trying to do right now is save up my heart. Keep it free from damage. Make sure it's here. Find myself. Gather all the skills I need. All the all, all the all the um the accolades, everything I need in order to get somebody worthwhile. I can't present my broken self to somebody and say, here, here, take it for exchange in exchange for 60 years of happiness. So what I said with myself is I, I just want to save those years, save those experiences, those learning lessons. And what I would say is I think it's very important for men, especially to become men, become a become a man. Become a disciplined, mal-tempered man. Because a lot of times, youth is the way, what's getting in the, re, the way of relationships working for us. You know what I mean? We, we haven't learned to control our temperament. We haven't learned that the world don't revolve around us. Um, and so those are, the t those are the things I took time um, learning. But that's why I'm single. Um, but, you know, let me say this. For people that are in relationships, I'm happy for them. I'm not saying I'm anti-relationships. But I'm, I'm, I'm pro-me. So everything that you get from a relationship, that love and that, those companionships, I get that from myself. I love me some me. Um, I give myself compliments on the daily. Ooh, Ace, you looking good today. Oh, thank you. I do that on a daily basis. So I don't well, need to fill that void with another person. Understand, you definitely shouldn't go into a relationship with a boy. But mm -hmm. you're going to have progress to make your entire life. So don't get, get to a point where I say, you know what, you don't have to be perfect, but get to being in work in order. Get to a healthy place, you know, but that journey of, of becoming your full, most awesome self, like the fullest potential, the fullest manifestation, that's going to be a lifelong, long, long journey if you're growing. And that person is going to be on their journey as well. So with everything that you're trying to get, what I don't want you to do is if you seriously, and I, and I know you do, sincerely desire a relationship, a healthy relationship, a queen, a wife, not just a girlfriend, like I don't want you to put that off and you come across that woman because you're not yet perfect. You know that you got a certain level to get to financially, spiritually, physically, et cetera. So I totally admire. I wish more men did the preparation you're talking about, and I had to do the same thing. I got my relationship as a teenager at 19 years old. I wasn't yet fully developed as a man when it came to being a man for a woman. I fucked up the only real relationship I ever had, messed up the only girl that I ever loved. I had to get myself right, and then I went back and got my girl. You know, but even still, to this day, there's still things I'm working on. There's th still things I'm working against, still things I'm healing. I'm just not acting from that place of brokenness. But there are still scars on me, just like I'm sure you got yours. So don't wait till you're perfect to get your queen. Okay. Can, I, can I be honest with you? Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty fun being me right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even, like, you know what? I always, I, tr I try to be really, like, transparent with y'all. It's really fun being me right now. Um, so I'm going to take a second to do that. You know what I'm saying? And so no, that just be me and Chris. Right. I'm just saying. I don't know where you at. So if you in that, man, I'm loving being me. And by being me, it sounds like you're saying I'm loving being by myself and being single. Absolutely. Yeah. That's your goal. I'm saying, because it was on my heart. Like, man, I used to do the. I don't know how far back you've gone into my post. Back in 2010, mm -hmm. 2011, I was doing Dear Future Wives. All that kind of um, stuff, man. I was my girl. I was doing Dear Future Wife. I wanted a relationship so bad. And when you really want that relationship, it's like, fuck dating. Fuck small talk. Yeah. I don't want to just smash you and go. Like, I know we ain't got nothing to build on. I can't trust you with my innermost secrets and dreams. I can't just indulge at 2 or 3 in the morning. We ain't getting up talking about our dreams and whatever. You know, I, I, want, I want that. So whenever you want that bad enough, all that. The single stuff is just like, eh, I don't have my fun. I don't want my freedom. I want somebody worth being linked to for the rest of my life. Yeah. So if you were there, I didn't know. But if you were there, what now, I was saying was, no, nah, I'm joking about that. I'm there. Like I'm, I'm there, and I'm in the process of 
obviously get into that space. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm I'm absolutely there. But through you know, and you you would understand this. Like through doing this, this becomes people don't understand how much consumption this takes of your life. You know what I mean? Like, and just the, being transparent. Like, if I wasn't doing this, I probably would have somebody because I would have the proper amount of time. And so it, it's a sacrifice you kind of make, and it, and it's like. Finding that balance is tough is because, you know, I spend the hours I'm talking to y'all on live could be the hours I'm actually building with somebody real. So it's like one of those things where I'm hoping to eventually be able to find better work life balance. But right now, you know, I'm so into this and giving and giving and the shows and this, that and other that it makes it more difficult to date. Um, this, but this is your purpose, finally, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. My, no, my apologies. Go ahead. Go ahead. This, this is your purpose, right? You feel like to pour into people's mm -hmm. lives and all the good stuff. That's your purpose, right? Man, mm -hmm. the right woman is going to integrate into that. She's not going to yeah. clash with that. She's not going to take away from that. So if you don't have, like, don't get me wrong. It does take a certain allotment of time and energy reserved in order to invest in effectively dating. But what I'm saying, sometimes you come across that girl. She's dope. Y'all, I don't know. Y'all work together. I don't know what happens, how you come across her. If it happens like that, that woman, if she's right for you, she'll integrate. She's not going to take away. In fact, what you're doing right now in terms of how much time you're putting in, whatever you're getting from it, if it's that right woman, dog, she's going to double and triple what you're doing without yeah. you having to do as much. So you yeah. like, man, I'm going 25 hours, eight days a week. Yeah, but you you only getting 30% as opposed to if you actually latched on and pursued that queen, she's going to get that to 900%. Would you only put in eight to ten hours on this and give her her three or four hours on the daily and then, you know, reserve mm -hmm. another day or two? So all I'm saying is, do you, Ace, I respect you because you know where you're at. So you're not about to play with nobody acting like you're ready exactly. for something that currently you're not, you're not for. But what I am saying, when you get to that point, don't pass up on that queen still trying to pursue. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not, that's not in my plans. Um, <laughs> that's not in my plans. That's just, but, I know, I, that's just us talking. But I will say this prior. I, I will I will say this with a hundred percent conviction. Prior to me, I started doing these videos when I was about twenty six, twenty seven. Mm -hmm. You know, so I've only been doing it two years. Prior to that, I had a different understanding of the individual I am, or I was, and right. and who I am now. The progress, and like you said, when you find your purpose at twenty seven or twenty six and a half, I wouldn't have had my purpose. You know what I mean? And so if I had wrapped up into another individual before I did that, maybe I would have never found myself. And so now that I have myself and have my purpose and have my direction and have learned the inner winding, um, working um, uh, things about myself, I'm able right. to now say, OK, I'm ready to give. However, I don't even think. I think about it, but I don't, if that makes sense. It's not a predominating thought in my mind. So if somebody comes across, and like I said, I have, you know, I have somebody right now that I, I, I think is pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even going to lie. I think she's pretty cool. Okay. But it's one of those things where I'm patient, um, and I want, it to, I want whatever relationship I get into to be the last one. So because of that, I, take, I, I use extreme care um, with growing so that it works out in the long run. Work. So – before we get off of here, all right, so anything you any any question, any any topic, what's the what's the first topic that come to your mind when you when you think about what 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 do you think will be beneficial to the audience that's watching right now? What what is a topic? Um what is something that's been on your heart? You're talking about that one that I could kind of pitch to you? Yeah. I would say what is the correct way to get somebody out of your system? That's something, and, I, and I'll give you a second to kind of brainstorm that. That's something I think women aren't really prepared for because they're taught that whatever they see is what they should be satisfied with in a man once they get of age to have a relationship. And that's why you have so many women that go into their first relationship wide open, ready to love, doing all the wife things for a dude who's still playing them little boy games. So what we don't put enough emphasis on, and that's the conversation I hope we can have more of those brothers of us with platforms, is okay, after that first time when you got smacked in the face and you learned the hard way that you have to be prepared, have your guard up, recognize red flags and whatnot, this is how you process that experience in a way that you don't put it on the next man. 
So how does a woman get that last guy, that last situation out of her system while still learning from it? By getting, you can't, you got to extract the lessons. I think the one thing that we don't do is 